uh, aside from teaching in the math department, uh, one of my jobs is to organize activities for students here um, in this house. Uh, so this, this activity is a little different because there's, there's some students, but there's also a mix of a lot of different people who are not all students. So there's faculty, there are postdocs, there are people that are just here because they like music. Uh, so I think it will be very interesting for everybody to socialize. It's going to be uh, wine and cheese. So, so, I mean, you know, in the tradition of jazz music and, um, and music in general, as we know that you normally invite a um, an artist or musician to give something called a master class. And it's usually so for those of you who um, you know study music, you know you go to the master class and there's some master musician that comes in and you play a little, you talk, they talk to you, and then they tell you how much you need to improve. They tell you how you can improve. <laughs> but we decided to do something a little bit different. So um, let me introduce myself. Some of you know me. I'm Stefan Alexander. I am the EE Just professor. Professor of Natural Sciences, um, sitting in the Physics Department, um, and I run the EEJUST program, the director of the EEJUST program, Egypt, that's an EEJUST scholars and Phoenicians. We know that astronomy, music, okay, were unified. All right, so the cradle of what we now call our modern science, physics, for example, is rooted actually in music. They were not, they were not separate. And um, so, you know, a couple of years ago, I had the pleasure of running into, um, so there's a very interesting story. I have a friend named Diego Cortez, <coughs> who was the crazy guy that introduced Jean-Michel Basquiat to Andy Warhol, and, um, and another friend, Arthur Lindsay. And they were telling me, there's this guy, you know, he's like the best bassist in the world. So you have to understand, when someone uses like extreme terms like the best something in the world, eminent yeah, things pull my leg. Jazz, writers, um, jazz culture aficionados, good friends with Whit Marcells for a long time, and, and, and many others. Um, I mean, if you go to any magazine store and pull out any jazz magazine, he's in it, okay? <laughs> but more than that, he's just a really nice guy. And um, he knows so much about the music. Um, and um, so I, I thought it was a good opportunity to get him to contextualize what this night is about. So let me just shut up, <laughs> sit down, because uh, the students are looking at me and saying, this guy is talking too much. Yet I submit more continuity and concordance between the arts and the sciences, especially music, as we will hear, can be divined than the pat Manichaean division between the arts and sciences suggested on the surface of such analyses as C.P. Snow's. Writer and intellectual Susan Sontag, Sontag would agree. In her 1965 essay, One Culture and the New Sensibility, Sontag jabbed at C.P. Snow, describing his statement as crude and philistine. The fact that music and the arts are, rel are related to feelings and to the human sensorium overall isn't new. That's one of the main reasons that, as author Ralph Ellison put it, music gives resonance to memory. What may be new is the manner in which Mr. Gibbs and Professor Alexander creatively collaborate on the forms providing the basis for such improvisation, utilizing the laws of the microscopic, atomic, and subatomic levels of quantum mechanics, as well as the macroscopic, cosmological realm of the structure of the universe. As the forms for such investigation, experimentation, on ancient speak, a boisterous new album by the bassist and programmer Melvin Gibbs, uniformly attest to an African continuum. He's currently co-leading the band Harriet Tubman, which is doing a project now with Cassandra Wilson called Black Sun. Let's welcome Melvin Gibbs. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the kid because you cannot upstage children. So wherever you are, we're going to drag you out. You're going to participate later. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Stefan for asking me to come up. So I want to thank. I need actually, obviously, Diego got mentioned. Who you don't know? I need to thank Diego for uh, introducing us. I need to thank uh, Miles for 
you know, making sure this got paid for. <laughs> and I need to thank everybody for coming. All right. So now I'm, eventually I'm going to need the secret code for this. Because oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Otherwise, no, man, well, you might as well just open. Well, I'll let you know. Okay. I'll let you know. It's going to be a few minutes. So it's all good. All right. So who likes we're going to have some hands up. Who likes rock? He doesn't raise his hand. <laughs> That's right, the jazz. Yes, but we'll, get, we'll get to the jazz now, please. Right. <laughs> Who likes R&B? Who likes funk? Who likes hip hop? Uh, oh, I didn't separate the generations out. <laughs> Who likes jazz? Some of y'all are lying right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? These musics all have in common is they're all based off of like, sort of zen and It's like you, you instant bam, you have the thing. Now this is tradition when you're playing, you can't just, part of learning how to play an instrument is you sit down and you shed, right? You practice, you practice, you practice, you practice. Some people don't know what shedding is. is all right, shedding like... is when you sit, when you, the, the blunt work of learning how to play an instrument. Your hours a day, where you sit down and you're... Anyway, you spend your hours a day, right? But that's just oodle 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 oodle. There's a certain point where the oodle 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 only makes sense because it makes sense to other people. And the oodle and the idea of mentorship is that you find people playing in a half circle now. But if you think about in Angola. This would be the line where everybody sits, and the person who sits in the middle would be the mestre, the master. The center of the crossroads is the point where you're going. This is where all the energies meet, and this is where the transformation takes place. So this is an idea that you see all over, and this is something that relates to the idea of what I do as a musician, because I play bass. From the tradition I come from, my job is to make people move. My job is to get them up, get them moving. Maybe they'll get back under their own power. Maybe. And um, I appreciate the invitation here to uh, introduce the DD Jazz program's first artist in residence, the bassist, composer, and producer Melvin Gibbs, and to give an opening frame for our gathering. So tonight we'll begin a discussion, uh, a discourse connecting the arts and sciences in perhaps a new way. Um, as you all well know, the revolution in human thought brought by Galileo, Kepler, Darwin, and Einstein transformed our view of nature, the cosmos, and the perception of the way humanity. In this cross, which is very reminiscent of, Christmas, of the Christian cross, you can see that it's not exactly symmetrical. And that actually has a meaning. But even the one that is symmetrical has a similar meaning because it's not, the cross might be symmetrical, but the force is not symmetrical because the force is now in the middle. And if you're going to see the force, if you're going to move towards the force, once you start moving, yay, good job. Thank you. <laughs> once you start moving, you've changed, the, you, you've broken the symmetry, but you still have this pattern that exists in the symmetry that you've now affected. So these are kind of really simple, basic ideas of how music gets generated that have developed into a whole system that I'm going to show you some real basics of now. All right. So that what this means to me is, is really just the basics of thinking about the idea of transformation, because the idea of transformation is really important to me personally on a lot of levels. And thinking about how the past goes to the future, the future goes to the past. Thinking about the idea of time, because when you have a rhythm, it, rhythms have a certain life that goes beyond. And I'm going to show you certain, speaking of certain life, I'm going to show you certain things. Okay, so, uh, how many people here are actually music students? <laughs> so, so we don't have to play much. 
<laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I was gonna. Okay, but first, you will play in a minute. First, I'm gonna erase this because I'm gonna. I need to show you guys some really simple things. All right. Really cool. This idea that we know as the idea of the beginning of the blues is an actually an idea that comes from West African cosmology. This idea of the crossroads is something you'll find in Ghana, Nigeria, Congo, all over West Africa. And whenever people have a point where they're having, they're having a problem with the transition or they have a problem that they can't solve, they will go to the crossroads and they will go. So, you think about the idea of the crossroads. The idea of the crossroads is a place where you go for knowledge and transformation. It's also a place you go where information is generated that didn't exist before. Uh, you also see this in the West when you in voodoo, you got leg, but anyway, it's a very important concept. basic rhythmic cells that exist in all of it. And I call one, and they, I, I use the numerics. People call them different things. In Cubans, the Cubans try to own it and call it the clave. But this clave pattern exists over most of Africa. It existed in African American music. They used to call it the bow diddly deep. You have this rhythmic pattern, you'll find it in Trinidad, you find it in Jamaica, you find it in Brazil. It's very, it's the root, right? There's even a more basic division of this clave, which I just call the three. And if you look at it, you have a series. I don't know how many, how, do you, anybody here does music on a sequencer? Do people do the music, do people use step sequences here? If you imagine that there's a series of eight events, You'll have the, on, laid out on the grid, you'll have your three rhythm events. And the three rhythm events will basically be, so I need everybody to do. Okay, so we're gonna do a little Brooklyn, we're gonna do a little Brooklyn style here. <laughs> now, those three events, very symmetrical events, right? Three, it repeats over and over and over, right? That three is, I can give you three different ways that three is flipped, okay? Uh, okay, if you did that about four times faster for about 12 hours, you would have a ring. This is the kind of things that happen. You have a symmetrical idea, and you have different people go into this idea, and they develop it in different ways. Now, this is a very, this is like the root foundation. Now, you got to remember, this is the bottom layer. There are going to be like four other layers on top of this, right? So that's one example of how this idea of going to the crossroads, and yes. Question. So you're basically saying it's the same pattern, but it's just shifted in different ways. Yes, it's just okay. shifted. It's just accented in different ways. And different know? countries make use of it, right? And different countries. For make hundreds use of years. It. For hundreds of years. Right. Now, uh, I'm going to show you something a little more. I'm going to show you show, show you something called modern American accord. Is anybody here? So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, let's, let's leave that one out. Ha, ooh, ooh, ha, ooh. Let's do it that way. Yeah. So let's go. <laughs> it's the basic beat of hip hop. It's the same clave, except it starts on the second beat instead of the first beat. Except, except so it's, again, it's that same idea of you have this repetitious pattern that seems like it's doing one thing, but if you turn the element slightly, it does something
Stone, the bass player for Sly and the Family Stone was a man named Larry Graham, who now is one of Prince's buddies, for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Larry grew up in the church, and uh, like a lot of people who had churches back then, they didn't have all the instruments. They had organ and drum. They had organ and bass. They didn't have a drummer, so to get the drums happening in church, that's why Larry started slapping the bass. That is literally what, why, why it started. So now, yeah. interestingly enough, in jazz with the stand up acoustic bass, yeah. there is a tradition before that. Yeah, Slam, of Slam Stewart actually yeah. doing a similar thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great thing. Uh, it's an interesting thing. Um. How can I put this without? Uh, I grew up in one of my main, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And uh, the unfortunate thing about life is no matter how well people get along, they have to find something to separate themselves. <laughs> and one of the things that happened in New York City was the musicians separated themselves by boroughs. <laughs> and uh, there are a lot of great musicians from my neighborhood. One, uh, Vernon Reed, who was the leader of the band Living Colors, one of my old friends from the neighborhood. A uh, bunch of guys that you haven't heard of that are names are on record, literally hundreds, I mean, more records than me. And I'm, you know, I'm on a couple hundred myself. But our rivals were the guys the next borough over in Queens. Two of them, uh, 
the two ones that nice time instead of like just putting this guy in his spot or whatever to please um you know get to know melvin a little bit yeah and i'll drink some more wine I'm <laughs> 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 